Hello and welcome back to a Sewing Machines UK tutorial. This is going to be episode 2 where we look at logos and basic logo digitization. In this episode we're going to look at two logos. We've got this Fast Banana logo and this Space Cube logo. Let's start by looking at the Fast Banana logo. I'm going to show you a method now but there are some caveats. If you're going to use this method you're going to want to make sure that your logo is high quality image has very defined lines and colors, but most of all is relatively simple. This method's gonna be auto punch, which I'm gonna say right away is not always good. You don't always get the perfect result first time. To start with, you're gonna to wanna to go to your image tab, then auto punch, obviously. It's gonna bring up this window. In order to open the image that you wanna edit, you wanna click open image in the bottom right, and then just select the image that you want. These images are going to be located where you saved them on your computer. You're then going to go ahead and click next. On this screen, I'm going to click fit to page, which will fit it to my current hoop that I have. If you want to change this hoop, you can click design settings and you're able to change the hoop here. You're also able to change the machine type in case it's a cylinder arm. I'm just going to stick with the one I have and click cancel. I'm then going to click next. On this screen there are a few things going on. Let's start with noise reduction. Noise reduction is going to be useful if your image is not of high quality. When you change anything on this screen you're going to have to click retry in order to actually see the results. Segmentation sensitivity is going to be how sensitive the program will be to different colors. If you have it high then it's going to be sensitive to a lot of various colors and low it will try and group together more similar colours. Down in the bottom right you have your maximum number of colours. If you change this it will limit the program and make it only use a certain amount of colours. This can end up with some wacky results if you've got quite a lot of colours in the original image. I'm going to go with 5. If you want to omit any areas and stop them from being sewed you can simply just click on them in the preview window. If they're hatched out it means they won't be sewn. I just want to get rid of the white background completely, so if I just click on the colour on the right hand side, I can omit the whole colour, so white won't be sewn at all. As you can see it's all hatched out, even the parts inside the letters which weren't connected to the background. Down on the bottom right again, you have your thread charts. If you select these thread charts, when it digitises the image, it will try and use these colours in order to create the design. We use Madeira Rayon so I'm going to go select that. If you change the thread chart you're going to have to re-emit your colours because it's going to clear that information. I'm then going to click finish. As you can see we have a pretty decent first try. Um, there are a few issues I can see immediately. I'm going to change to solid view at the bottom right of my screen. You can also do it up here in the view section. Solid view allows you to see block colours which can be really useful for stuff like this because that's what I'm working with, block colours. And I can immediately see two little mistakes. There's two little yellow artefacts on the F and one on the S. But as of right now, my entire image is grouped together. So I'm going to have to ungroup it. To do that, I'm going to go to the Home tab after selecting it. And then go to Group and then click Ungroup. That's going to break it down into its individual elements. So that I can edit the parts that I want to edit. As you can see I can remove the outline of the banana if I wanted to. It's all separate now, each colour. So I'm going to zoom in again. Take a look at this F. You can see there's a yellow bit underneath which shouldn't be there. So I'm just going to simply click it and then press the delete key on my keyboard. I'm going to go back to stitch view because I actually find it easier to edit like this. <laughs> then I'm going to delete the other one that's on the S as well going to check all the letters make sure they're all good I'm happy with it I'm seeing something as I zoom out the T isn't quite right it looks a lot different to the rest of the letters in stitch view and I immediately figure out what it is so I'm going to turn on all my panels my sewing attributes and my colors and what have you on the right hand side to fix this issue I'm going to go to the sewing attributes tab I'm going to click on it and as you can see the direction of sewing is zero degrees. I know that's not right so I look at the other letters 
and all the other letters are 135 degrees. So I'm just going to go ahead and change the direction to 135, hit enter, and there we go. It now looks the same as every other letter. That's just a quirk of auto punch. As a final touch, I'm going to go into the banana and change each colour to its own unique direction. In the final stitch out, this will just give it a bit of a more personality, um, not everything just going in the exact same direction. I just think it looks better. And I'm going to leave the stem how it is. And that's basically it. It's worth just checking everything over, check the font, put it in solid view just to make sure that everything's looking right. And remember, you're not always going to get perfect results with Auto Punch, but you can't beat the speed of it. And I would call that done. So with that method done, we're going to start looking at our second method and our second logo as well, which is the Space Cube logo. If you want to catch more videos like this, please consider subscribing and you'll be notified when they come out. In spite of this logo having very similar attributes to the other logo, I'm going to show you a different method, a more manual method, and not use auto punch this time, because it's not always going to give you perfect results. Okay, to start, I'm going to go to the image tab and instead of using auto punch, I'm going to click open from file. Then I'm going to select my space cube image. That's going to place it in the background. There's currently a bug where sometimes PNG images will display the transparent background as black. So to manage this, I'm going to turn down the opacity up here in the image tab at the top left. That makes the image more transparent and therefore the black is less noticeable. I only really need it for the shapes anyway. Next, I'm going to go to my home tab and select the shapes tool. I'm going to just want to do single straight lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the open straight line tool, select a color that's roughly approximate to the color that I want it to be. And then I'm simply just going to start clicking on the corners of the cube in order to create a rough outline. If you hold the shift key, it'll force the line to be straight. And no matter what you do, you can't unstraighten it. So it's perfect for these sides. Double click to end. There, now I have my outline. But I actually want it to be one solid object because as you can see, there's actually a break in the outline here. So to do that, I'm going to go to the top left Click this drop down and get the select point tool. Select point tool is really good because it allows you to select individual points of a line like these two. And if I hold alt, I can connect them together to form one object. This is going to create a fill. So to remove that, I'm going to go to the contextual tab at the top right and then select not sewn for the region so that it's blank. With my select point tool then I can make any adjustments I want to that outside. Right now I'm going to get those inner lines done. I'm going to go back to the shapes tool, select the straight line tool again and then simply just draw those inner lines. You want it to be as few lines as possible. So I'm going to do one for these top two and then one for the bottom. I'm then going to grab my point select tool again and just fix them if I think they're not quite straight. Fix the outline as well. You can move anything at any time so you're never stuck. I'm happy with the way it looks. So I'm going to select the outline. I'm then going to go to the zigzag width in the sewing attributes on the right. Change it to four millimeters and hit enter. That's going to make the outline thicker, which is more accurate to the original image. Then I'm going to adjust the transparency again in the image tab, just so I can check it with no background. Yeah, that looks about right to me. Turn the image back on. Then go home to my shapes tool, 
and this time I'm going to select the straight block manual punch tool. I'm going to go in and do the squares with this tool. You start by selecting one corner, then the bottom corner, and then you don't want to select the right hand corner which seems intuitive, you can right click to undo any step. You want to select the top corner and then the opposite bottom corner. Double click to end and this will create a square shape. Do this again for every face. I'm then going to change to the select tool instead of point select and select the faces one by one, changing them from satin stitch to a fill stitch, as satin stitch won't work on an object of this size. Now I'm going back to the point select, I'm going to select each face, and I'm just going to adjust it slightly. I want it to overlap with the purple lines a little bit, um, just so that there's no gaps when I sew it out. And then on the left hand side I'm going to adjust the sewing order so that the purple lines are on top of the panels as I want them to be on top in the final stitch out and the order is from top down so the things at the top will be sewn first I need the purple lines to be sewn last so they're on top. Simple as that. Right now that that's done I can go ahead and adjust the colors of the faces. To do that I'm going to change the opacity back to full so I can see the true colors. That's an image tab at the top left. Then at the color tab on the right hand side, I'm gonna select the color that most closely resembles each face. And there we go, I'm almost done with my cube. I'm gonna decrease the transparency again. At the bottom right, I'm going to go to solid view so I can see the solid blocks. And then with my point select tool again, I'm just going to make sure that all the lines are exactly how I want them to be. Right, increase that opacity again for the background. And I'm going to grab my line tool one more time because I realized I forgot those inner lines. Exact same as before, just draw the lines, double click to end. Make sure they're correct in the sewing order. I want the big outline to be sewn last, so I'll move that down. Look at solid view again. I've realized now that I'm not happy with the sewing direction of each face. I want them to be different. So what I'm going to do is get the point select tool, just delete one of these sewing direction lines so that I can change the manual direction on the right hand side in the sewing attributes. Gonna change it, then I'm gonna grab that sewing angle and I'm gonna roughly try and line it up with the edge so that the direction of the sewing goes in the same direction as the face. I'm gonna repeat that for the other side. And that just adds a bit of variation. It's not necessary at all, but I just like the way that it looks. Then I'm gonna increase my opacity again so that I can see the image because I'm gonna have to start working on the font. Let's go on text under the home tab. As you can see, there's so many fonts to choose from, and if your client sends you the font that they want, then you can simply just go ahead and download it, and it should appear in your true type fonts at the bottom. I found a font that roughly resembles this one, so I'm just going to use that. I'm going to click in the frame and then just type it out space cube. Then hit enter. That's going to turn it into stitches. Now I'm going to change the color. At the bottom right of the color tab, you have your palette. That's going to include every color that's currently in your frame. So I'm just going to select the same purple that's already in my frame. Then I know it matches. Then I'm going to change the size of the font at the top left. 
to about 30, that sounds about right to me. Then I'm just going to drag the text box until the text looks roughly the right size. At the top left I'm going to turn off my opacity again. And yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with it, so I'm going to call this done. So yeah, that's the manual method. Um, some people find it a lot more arduous, but you have a lot more control. So some people like it a lot. I'm starting to like it a lot more as well. I think the manual methods are the way to go, to be honest with you. But if not, you've always got the auto punch method that we used on the first logo. So take your pick. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was useful as well. If you're not already subscribed then I would heavily advise that you do so you don't miss the next episode as soon as it comes out. Oh yeah, and hit the like button as well. I'll see you in the next one.